All right, if you've never used Photoshop before, it is a very intimidating software. I know it has a ton of tools. So the good news is you don't have to know how to use all the different tools. I'm gonna go over my top five most used tools. These will probably be the ones that you'll be using the most as well. So to get started, number one is the quick selection tool. That is the W shortcut on your keyboard. And this is super helpful, mostly in cutting out things from images. So we have Joe White in this example. If we wanna cut out Joe White, you can click and drag with the quick selection tool. Photoshop is gonna do its best to kind of stay with the selection and guess what you're going for here. So you might have to take away some of the selection as well. Those are all things you can do with the quick selection tool. There are other options sort of within each tool. So if you right click on any of the tools that have a, a drop down, you can see object selection tool comes up that lets you draw a box around something in an image. And again, Photoshop is gonna guess what you're going for here. So it does a pretty good job. I like to use select subject at the top here. So with the quick selection tool selected, click select subject. And again, Photoshop will take its best guess at whatever you wanna select. So selections are, are huge, very useful. I am just gonna mask this out real quick. The next tool I wanna show you is the move tool. So that's the shortcut V on your keyboard. This one I use probably more often than any other tool or maybe all of the tools combined. This is kind of my, my home base tool. Anytime I get done doing something, I just default by pressing V. You can move things around. The one thing to keep in mind is if you wanna move a specific part of any design, you have to make sure that that layer is selected. If we make a new layer and there's nothing on it, but I'm trying to move Joe White, I can click and drag all I want, but nothing is gonna move because nothing is on the layer I have selected. You have to make sure that the layer is selected and that the layer and the tool are, are talking to each other, that they make sense together. So this is how you would move anything. While we're here making a, a very simple design, I'm gonna transform Joe White by hitting Command T. That's Control T on a PC, I believe. You can also get there from edit, free transform, and that'll let you scale down or up or also move around. Next up, we have the paint bucket tool. So that's the shortcut G on your keyboard. Use this all the time for backgrounds. If I just wanna start with a solid background, there are other ways to do it. You can go down here, click this icon, go to solid color. That is one way you can get a background and move it to the first layer. A lot of times it's quicker for me to just quickly make a new layer, click the paint bucket, drop it down. Uh, it's kind of just a workflow thing, but generally I, I like when I can use keyboard shortcuts. You can also make gradients. So, you know, if we change this to more of like a gray color, just so we can see what a black gradient looks like. Again, this is a, a drop down within the paint bucket tool menu. You can drag up a black gradient. You can change the angle that it's coming in and, you know, figure out what your design most needs. That looks kind of cool. Next, we're gonna move on to the brush tool. So that's B on the keyboard. This icon over here is the brush tool. Uh, pretty straightforward, let's make a new layer. You can change the size of your brush with the bracket keys. There's also a brush menu up here. You can kind of get the full settings here, change the size of the brush, the hardness, that is like how blurred the edges of the brush are, the spacing, all that good stuff. There's a shorter list of options. If you just click this drop down up here, you can change the, the type of brush you have. You got like a charcoal brush. And as long as you make sure the, the foreground color is able to show up on the background, you will be able to see whatever you're drawing. Brush can be great for a lot of different things. One thing is masking. I mask a lot, and if you have a mask selected on a certain player or object, what you can do is take a black brush or a white brush to kind of fine tune that selection a little bit more. So if I were to take a small black brush and just make sure the, the spacing is normal and the size is normal, you can clean up this leg a little bit, switch to a white brush, and that will let you fill back in the image. So it's a good way to clean up your edges when you need to using the brush tool on a mask. 
My fifth and final tool that I use more than anything is the text tool, which is T on the keyboard. Also a T is the icon for the text tool. So if you make a new layer and you can either make a, a text box by clicking and dragging, that can be a paragraph of text. Um, you can basically edit a lot of the text settings using this character panel. So you can change the font size, you can change the font itself, uh, you can change the, the stretching and the, the height of the text. You can mess with the case. So if you typed out, oh, this is a bad example, but if you type something out that had lowercase letters, lowercase letters, you can make it all uppercase. You can adjust the space between lines, space between letters. But you also don't have to do a text box. You can just click anywhere and it'll just make a line of text. So if we just want to write out Joe White, sorry, my font is all wonky to start out. Yeah, that's kind of a cool look. I'm just gonna center that. And you can duplicate the layer. I'm, I'm moving it down, Chicago Union. So those are my five favorites. Quick selection, move, paint bucket, brush, and type. You will use them a lot too, I guarantee it. This is a great starting point for anyone that's new to Photoshop. I also think it's a great idea to practice using these tools as much as possible. Just open up a document, draw stuff with your brush, just get used to clicking between layers, making new layers, and making sure you're only affecting the things you want to affect. Playing around and just experimenting and practicing is the best way to get better. These are my five most used tools. You will find other ones you like, you will find your own workflow. There's really no wrong way to do things, which is also cool about Photoshop. Hope this helps.